So today you join me in our bedroom where I'm going to upgrade this um, dumb switch to a smart switch. Now this is for our bathroom, it's got two, two switches. We've got the lights on the first one and the extractor fan on the second one. Now, I want to upgrade this to be smart for two reasons. Firstly, we have a habit of leaving the light on in here with the door closed and not really noticing. So I want that to be able to be turned off automatically when we leave the lights on, no point running the lights when we don't need them. And secondly, I don't really want the extractor fan to be switched here because it's easy to get to turn it on. Um, so what I want to do there is have it come on automatically when there's a higher humidity in the bathroom, which we can set up using a, a humidity sensor. Now what I'm gonna use is one of these um, Acara um, smart wall switches. And the great thing about these is they've got two, they've got two relays, so you can control two separate devices or uh, circuits here, and they've got two switches on the front. And those switches can be used independently of the relays if you want. So if you wanted to um, use this to um, just as a smart switch without actually controlling anything, you can do that too. It just needs some power. Now what I've got here is I've got the no neutral uh, version of the switch because behind this uh, socket, uh, this switch, sorry, we don't have a neutral connection, so we're using this one. Um, most of the switches here in the house do, um, and for those I've got the one with the uh, with neutral, obviously, um, and these ones can do power monitoring too. So if you've got the neutral there, it can monitor how much power um, the whole device is using, so you can see how much power your lights are using which is fairly interesting. So let's get on and put this switch on. We're going to begin, we'll take this one off. So we'll just, I've already isolated the power, but once I've got this off, I will go and um, I'll just verify that with a voltage tester. So behind here, you can see we've got three wires coming in. We've got a permanent live uh, on the brown here. We've got a black, a uh, black switch live for the light and a grey switch live for the extractor fan. Before we go any further though, I'm going to verify that this is actually off by checking the voltage between earth, which I do have in this back box, um, and the permanent live connection. Yep, so we've got no voltage on there so we can continue uh, safely here. So what I'm going to do is just disconnect all the components of this switch. So we've got the grey there, for the extractor fan, the black here for the lights themselves, and we've got the, the permanent live there. So we'll get the, the, uh, the switch out here. Let's just open this up. Now I've got a few of these which I'm putting around the house at the moment, um, and they're, they're pretty good little devices. Uh, I'm gonna be hooking this up in a minute, which I'll show you how hooking this up into Home Assistant works. Um, using Zigbee. So here's the, um, the actual switch. As I said, this is the no neutral version, so we've only got to plug these three wires into it. We haven't got to worry about putting in a, a neutral. So they just click, and they've got a little LED on the front to show whether the, the relay behind them is on or not. So we'll just open this up and take off the, the back plate. And we'll switch our screwdriver over to a slightly smaller one which can fit into our, our holes here. So there's two terminals, there's live, live one, live two, we'll switch live one, switch live two. Um, it's important to remember that switch live two is the left side and switch live one is the right side. So um, when you're looking at it like this, that matches to the one on this side. So if you want your light switch to be controlled first, then you need to put it into, into L2, which I will do. So give me a second while I plug all this in. Now it's important to make sure you tighten these up um, tightly and securely because you don't want these falling out when you push this back onto the wall because when you push this onto the wall they can have a tendency to either fall out if you haven't put them in properly and the last thing you want is live connections floating around in there. Um, what you will find if you get a live connection in there and it touches this metal back box, if you've got an earth connection here, it'll probably trip some sort of um, RCD, um, 
which is good. So make sure you push it back into the wall. Then what I usually do is push it back in, get it where I, exactly where I want it to go, right up against the wall. Then I'll take it out and just verify that the uh, connections are still tight um, because the movement on those cables can, can, can push them out a bit. Not so much of a problem with lighting wires and things like this because you've got um, slightly smaller cables to work with, but on sockets and things like that, it's definitely a good idea to do that where you've got the, uh, the two and a half mil um, cables. So we'll just put this back plate back on the wall here. As you can see, that was fairly, um, fairly straightforward. Nothing really to, to worry you there. Um, it's slightly more complicated when you're doing the ones with the, uh, with the neutral in, because you need to just make sure that you've got that permanent neutral connection into this, which means sometimes you might need to find, you need to put a little um, a Wago connector behind there um, to join all the neutrals together, because you, you may find you've got a few neutrals all coming into the same the same back box that needs to be connected together. So we'll just screw this back onto the wall. So you just need to make sure you get it nice and straight here. You don't want it to look look on the straight. If you had a spirit level, you could certainly use one at this point to speed things along. Okay, so that's nice and secure on there. And then all you need to do is take your switch here, pop it onto the, onto the little push it and then just put it in at the bottom there like that. And then you've got your, your switch there all ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go and get my computer. Um, I'm gonna put the power back on here and then we'll hold down the button for five seconds, which will put it into pairing mode. And then we'll bring it in onto the, um, onto the Home Assistant. So bear with me, we'll go and get that now. Right, so I've got my laptop here now and we're going to pair up the, um, the switch. Now to do this, I'm using Zigbee 2 MQTT, which basically is an add-on you can get for Home Assistant that um, bridges Zigbee devices directly to an MQTT broker, which is quite a nice way of managing this sort of setup. As you can see, I've got a few other ones set up on here already. So what we need to do is press permit to join and that will allow new devices to join and then we'll press the button on the switch for five seconds. So let's do that. And we do that until the lights flash and then the device will pop up. As you can see here, it says unsupported at the moment. If you give it a minute to do its interview, um, it'll come up with the details for the device. So we'll give that a mo. So when the device has been added on here, we just click into there. We'll give it a name here and we'll call it um, on suite bathroom switch. And we will update the Home Assistant Entity ID. We'll press rename. And if we go then to the exposes option, we can see the different things it, it exposes. So power outage memory is basically, does it remember the state that it was in when the power comes back on? And we're gonna go with false on that one. Um, flip indicates lights off. We don't want the lights to be inverted. So the little LEDs come on when it's off and off when it's on. Um, the current state of the left switch, if we press on, the light comes on in there, press off, it'll come off. We can choose the operation mode, which can be either control relay or decoupled. In decoupled mode, it won't actually switch the relay on and off. It'll just um, send a signal to MQTT to say it's been pressed, which means you could do anything then. So we'll go control relay and just leave it on that one for now. And the same with the, um, with the one on the right. Once that's all set, we're basically done. So if we go and have a look in settings here and we go down to devices and services and we look at our MQTT broker, we should be able to find in here our ensuite bathroom switch and we've now got the normal options. So we can click that on and off. Now the first thing to do here is take the left button and go show as light and press update. And what that's gonna do is hide the left um, button and give us a new one here and we can call this on suite bathroom lights, and we'll give that a appropriate image, um, and we will name it appropriately as well. Update. So now we have that there, and we know right here is the extractor fan, so we're gonna go switch as fan, and press update. Yes, we want to create a new thing, and we're gonna call it on suite bathroom extractor fan. Keep the icon, and we'll just make sure. Update. So now we can turn both of those on and off 
as we need to, which is great. Um, you can use this sensor. So you've got this action here, which says none because nothing's currently being pressed. So that what that shows is the current state of that device. And it might say something like single left, which means you've pressed the left hand button once or double left if you press it twice. Um, when you're working them with the relays, they don't work so well because pressing them will also turn it on and off. So if you press it twice quickly, it'll turn it on and off again, which isn't always something you want to want to do. It'll look a bit rubbish. Um, so that's it. That's now set up. That's all you need to do. Um, you, there are other things you can use with Zigbee. Um, there is a Zigbee integration directly in Home Assistant that you can use as well. Um, there's lots of docs about um, Zigbee to M2TT. I'm not going to go in all the details on how to set that up, but I will put some links in the description to some useful documents about that. So I think that's all I want to talk to you about. Um, just hit subscribe, like, um, leave me a comment if you've got any questions about any of this. Um, I'm happy to, uh, to look at um, doing videos that might be useful to anyone who's watching. And yeah, I'll see you on the next video.